Hey, how you doing? I hope things are going well for you right now. Something I really want to talk to you about. Uh, I got to say it's late and it's after midnight. I was planning on getting to bed early tonight, but this is really on my mind and I have to talk to you about this. In the last vlog I put out, I told you all about this new TV show that I'm doing for EWTN called Battle Ready. And you know the funniest thing about it? One of the most difficult parts of talking about Battle Ready in general is trying to convince people that there's a battle. I mean, there's no doubt about this. And some of you listening, some of you watching right now, you know this. You know that it's difficult to convey to people the seriousness of what's going on. A lot of people just don't wanna hear it. They don't wanna buy into it. They don't wanna believe it. Even though scripture talks about it. You know, Ephesians 6, put on the armor of God. Our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities of darkness. Revelation 12, the battle that broke out in heaven and the devil and his fallen angels who hate God, rejected God. There was no longer a place for them. They were defeated. They were cast down to earth. This is all real. First Peter 5, 8, you know, be watchful and alert. The devil roams around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. We don't take this seriously. A lot of people don't want to listen to it. We think that spiritual warfare a lot of times is the exorcisms. It's it, it, the possessions that are going on in the world. It's, it's a, you know, abortion. It's terrorism. It's these things. Yeah, that's spiritual warfare. But a lot of us don't want to pay attention to the reality, the signs of the times even, or the prophecies of the Blessed Mother. And that's really what I want to get into. I did a video back in December on this on Fatima that we're in the 100th year anniversary and the serious warnings that she gave us at that time. In the midst of World War I when it took place and that there would be a second war and 20 years later, that war happened. And she said the war would come if we didn't stop offending God. Now, October 13th was the miracle of the sun and 70,000 people saw the miracle of the sun. All right? They saw the sun spinning in the sky, coming towards the earth and so forth. Let's see some of this in the video that I put out there. It's on the channel here. But I have to say to you, you know, there's a lot of people who don't want to hear this. They don't want to talk about this. And what they don't want to hear and talk about is the fact that we're still in a world of hurt right now. It really blows my mind when you look at the signs of the times, everything going on around us. Look at what's happening and still people don't want to hear about it, don't want to talk about it. Let's ramp this up to another level. How about 1973, Akita, Japan. In 1973 in Akita, Japan, the Blessed Mother appeared to Sister Sasagawa. It's been approved by the church, thoroughly investigated with m incredibly massive miracles that come along with it. Like a wooden statue of our Blessed Mother that wept and perspired and had a wound in the hand that bled. I'll do a much more extensive vlog on that in the near future. But I just wanna to touch base on it right now because this is just, this is getting me in here right now that a lot of people don't even wanna pay attention to this. Now of the three main messages that our Blessed Mother gave Sister Sasagawa, the third one came on October 13th, 1973. The same day of the miracle of the sun back in 1917. And what she said that day is frightening. And it should be frightening because it's that serious. And what she said was this. This is a paraphrased version of it. She said there, October 13th, 1973, is it because of man's sin that God had been preparing and is preparing this, this chastisement for the world? And that if man doesn't repent, fire will fall from the sky and a great multitude, a great part of humanity will be annihilated. And those who are good will die with those who are evil, even priests will die. And she goes so far as to say that this will be worse than the deluge, the flood. Not in maybe the number of death, no. But the devastation of the souls. And she says something about that at the end. She goes on to say this, that those who are living will envy those who have died. The living will envy the dead. And she says, you'll have two things left. You'll have the rosary and you'll have the sign left by my son, which it's unclear what that is. But at the end of this message, she says this, the cause of my great sadness is the loss of so many souls. The cause of my great sadness is the loss of so many souls. She's concerned about our souls. Now, there are many people who don't want to even believe that the Blessed Mother appears in the world, and yet the miracles that accompany these things are massive. For the next six years after this apparition took place, this wooden statue, again, perspired, wept, and bled. And Bishop Ito of Japan had samples taken of these the perspiration and the tears and the blood taken to a scientist without telling the scientist where they came from, the scientist investigated and said they're all human from a wooden statue. Oh no, we just, no, I don't wanna hear this, I don't wanna. And that's what a lot of people do. Priests will do that, cardinals, bishops, just ignore these things. The warnings from heaven coming through the Blessed Mother approved by the church. Part of the battle is trying to convince people that there is a battle. And if you're watching this right now, I'm pleading with you to help spread the word about this. We need to be ready for the battle. We need to be spiritually battle ready. We need to be prepared for all that's happening. Look at what's taking place in our world. And we don't want to hear about it because we don't want it to infringe upon our hopes, our dreams, our, our entertainment, our recreation, our happiness, our, our idea of peace. 
True peace is being in the order of God, is being in the state of grace with God. And because we don't want to be disrupted and have our, our hopes and dreams infringed upon, we aren't probably going to respond like we should. Because one of the key things that the Blessed Mother is saying to us over and over again is respond by intensifying your prayer life. Pray the rosary every day, she says. Again, I keep this on my desk. I've got one in my Jeep, one in my pocket all the time, my backpack on my desk, next to my bed. Keep them all around. Why? They're weapons, they're spiritual weapons. And she keeps saying over and over, pray the rosary. How often? Every day. Now, we don't always all get that in, I understand that, but are we even trying? And are we helping others see the importance of this? But you know what, if we don't take the time to pay attention to these messages, because we don't want to be infringed upon, we don't want to have to you know, change our way of thinking or have our entertainment or our dreams or our hopes shattered by the idea of warnings of chastisements, fire falling from the sky, yeah, that's tough. I think about that all the time and I've been talking about this for years. It's hard. It's hard to have that in the back of your mind all the time. I struggle with that sometimes. It's a heavy, heavy message. You know, you're going to the grocery store, just you're picking up items from the grocery store to take care of, feed your family. Yet in the back of your head, you know, wow, fire will fall from the sky. When? How? What's this going to look like? Very easy to think, well, it's off in the distance. It's somewhere else. Sooner or later, it's going to be upon some generation. Just like World War II was upon some generation, prophesied by the Blessed Mother 20 years before it happened. Now, people back then could have easily said, ah, oh, that's off in the distance. We're not going to worry about it. It's not going to bother me. Someone had to deal with it. And by the end of World War II, roughly 70 million were dead because we didn't respond. Face it, we did not respond to the warnings of our Blessed Mother and the call for conversion, the need to change our lives, deepen our prayer life. We did not respond enough. And I don't think we're doing it right now. Do you? Comment, tell me what you think. I really wanna have this conversation with you. What do you think? Do you think we are responding? Do you think we are doing everything our lady's asking us to do? This is something, again, if you and I don't take the time to be serious about this, respond to this, because we don't wanna be infringed upon, Sooner or later, because of our lack of response and our lack of spreading the message, someone else is going to be infringed upon. Someone else's life is going to be infringed upon through some tragic situation, some war, some chastisement from God. I, I have to share this with you. I'm going to wrap it up there. I leave you with this reminder. Blessed Mother's words to Sister Sasagawa in Akita, Japan, October 13, 1973. Cause of my sadness is the loss of so many souls. Let's you, me, let's, let's start with prayer and let's do more. God bless you. Talk to you again soon.